did I really want people to know what it's like to grow up in a system and mm. not grow up in a home mm. that's truly like your home? Every time, you know, it's called Garbage Bag Girl is the name of the book because um, every time I was moved every six months, because for me, going through child welfare, there was this philosophy at the time that keep transitioning the kids because they're not going to stay with the family anyway. So why should they get attached? Right. Keep moving them. Well, now we know that's extremely Absolutely unhealthy. Bull like, crap. Yeah. Whether you stayed a family for a minute or forever, you need to have those human attachments. Yeah. But at that time, so it was every six months. So I lived in about 31, 32 cities by the time I was 16. What? And it was, I mean, I have a great appreciation for world travel. Yeah. I'm just saying. Um, but two schools a, a year. And I'm, I mean, it was, it was easy to kind of learn to start to like say, hi, I'm Celeste and make friends. But, you know, looking back, I realized I didn't ever make the same kind of connections that some people make in terms of, oh, I come from this town. And yeah, I, we've been friends since the third grade. Yeah. Our, our families know each other and I can call you anytime. Like, I don't know that concept. Mm. And um, most of the kids that stay with us will never know that concept either. So it's, it's, it's kind of a heavy heavy responsibility but every time I moved um, placements I was like okay in 30 to 45 seconds I'm going to quickly pack up everything I have in this garbage sack Hmm. and then I'm going to go to the next home and I'm going to start asking to borrow items Um, do you have hygiene products you know do you have a pair of shorts because I get my very last visit with my dad this coming Saturday and I want to be really cute this is when I was eight Hmm. And I knew that was the last visit. It's like, I have to borrow everything. So when people are like, why do you only collect new stuff? Like, here's a perfect example. When we opened uh, 27 years ago, I asked um, eight-year-old Kimberly. She had long black hair. And obviously, she was eight, and eight was an impactful year for me. So it was a very emotional moment. And I was like, hey, Kimberly, what do you want for Christmas? If I can make it happen, it's, it's, happen. it's on. Yeah. yeah. And she sits there. It felt like a long time. It was probably like two minutes. And she said, I'll just have a shirt with a tag on it. That's all she wanted was something new. I don't know, how about 10 shirts with tags on it? You have a preference in colors. I was like, long sleeve, short sleeve. But I was like, you can ask for anything, Kimberly. And her point was like, I I don't really need what you probably think I'm going to ask for. Yeah. I just need comfort and hope and new and not have to ask for a second to borrow something all Mm. the time. And so... In 27 years, I'm proud to say no child's left the Christmas box house within a freaking garbage sack. They've all picked a duffel bag or a backpack or whatever is meaningful to them. And then everything they get that's brand new goes in it. And then everything that they need when they leave that's new for the next placement, it's all their stuff. And it's, we have kids now after being around so long that are alumni, that are adults. And I had this really cool opportunity last summer to interview three of them. They all came back to the Salt Lake house for the first time since they were a kid. Wow. So I have this cool footage of like, I would tell the camera crew, just stay back. Just like, wait a minute, let them catch their breath and let's just see where they go. Every single one of them followed the same little path. Ironically, they weren't even there at the same time. They touched the stuffed animals. They walked around the tree that they see for the first, like they went through their first experience of moving through the house and they speak about the same experiences of what it meant to them and that they still have those first new items they ever got in their life to this day. One's like, Ricky the raccoon. (laughs) I'm like, you're Ricky the raccoon? Cool, I love Ricky the raccoon. Like it's it's the smallest acts, smallest acts of kindness, the smallest one-offs that make the most, most, the biggest impact to the kids. And so it's pretty awesome. That is so awesome. That is, that is <laughs> Clearly, I'm awesome. really passionate. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love yeah, the connection and the newness of the item. And this is mine and it's meaningful and it gives me yeah. almost an identity. Like I am worthy of having Ricky the raccoon. Like it was a gift for me. That's right. And having that means I matter and I'm, I'm a real person. And yep. it, yeah, it's like that first connection of uh, that's meaningful. That's, yeah. that's powerful. They, they, they all speak of that. I mean, it was it was not ironic or coincidental. It was that's we knew that's what mattered. And then they we told them, you know, where all this stuff comes from, right? Like the community, people you've never even met in your whole life. And from personal experience, I know that to be heart wrenching and beautiful and all those things because at the time you're going through that, there's you're thinking no one's on your side, right? You're, you're alone. Like, huh. 
I mean, the moment somebody was like, hey, Celeste, I'm like, already packing. I mean, I just kind of knew. I mean, it's when I was adopted at 26, is because my, the first thing my mom said to me, my mom, who I call mom, who adopted me as an adult, I was um, 16 and she comes walking in the, the kitchen and she says, I- I'm doing dishes because I learned that if I clean, people would ask me to leave less hmm. and I'm really good at it. So she's like, hey, can I talk to you for a minute? And I'm thinking, oh, here we go. It's, you know what, I, it's fine, don't feel bad. Everything's fine every six months, this is what we do. And she said, you know, you don't have to be perfect to live here, right? Mm. And I was like, I don't even know what that means, but okay. She's like, you don't have to clean, you don't have to do the dishes, you don't have to cook, you don't have to do something every second to stay here. Home, that's when she first said, home's where they have to keep you. That's just the way it is. Mm. And I was like, okay, something's coming up. <laughs> like, yeah. I just couldn't get my head around it, which is why I think ultimately the adoption was so critical because I, I've always had this feeling of, you know, the mic's going to drop, right? The Someone's going to pull the rug out. I mean, I, I struggle with it today for sure. Not nearly as bad, but there's kind of this constant like, all right, I'm going to get booted out at any minute. It's fine. Mm. My stuff's always ready. I don't want to be in the way. It's, it's gathered up I'm like in a neat little spot. I can be out of here in a sec. It's interesting. That's so how you were um, of the mind that I'm going to prove my value. I'm, yes. I'm worth having here. Let me show you. That's, that's right. That's that, exactly that's exactly what it is. There's always a need to be validated. Yeah. Um, because you don't know how to find that within until you, you know you're o- you're older and maybe you seek help and you, you figure that out. You don't know that that value has to come within yourself. You can't keep seeking it from other people. Yeah, or it'll never be filled. That's right. That's wow. right. And so yeah, it's in learning that lesson. Um, I I think this is is probably one of the most important lessons in our lives is finding is is knowing that I am valuable regardless of right. what other people think of me and I'm, I'm valuable um, as a person the second I was born you cannot add to or take away the value that I That's came right. with there's no doctor that holds up a baby and says quick nurse bring me a shot of value you know <laughs> That's totally true it's because it's like what's the what's the one thing that's going to uniquely differentiate everybody no one's gonna have the same, same DNA right your unique value is is truly that it's so unique but you get beat down enough and you get you know told you're worthless enough and at some point you just don't believe it i can guarantee you you're not born thinking that right i think right. you're pretty you watch little kids mm-hmm. they're pretty invincible yeah they're like <laughs> walking around in a t-shirt run that wall get back boots. up and do it again yeah. yeah whatever they want they don't care yeah and then we grow up and then we start to learn these beliefs these lies they're, they're that's really right. lies that's right um, because it's not congruent with who we are i don't believe that i'm worthy but somehow i know i'm intrinsically infinitely valuable and so that is a lie right that's right and i i love that um the gift the uh, the the thing that you're giving them the newness and that is is starting that story and i it's i may be adding too much to uh ricky the raccoon but i can really see the a person for the first time thinking oh yeah i I am loved that's right that's powerful and they they get to select everything that's new right it's not even like they're handed it they walk in and they're we're like you can have whatever stuffed animal you want well there's shelves of them you know it's from disney to whatever star wars to, it doesn't really matter yeah. you want a yoda you want to right. someone like no i just want this little guy great yeah so they start there and then everything that they get and they pick out as they accumulate it that's new it continues to belong to them but they've They've actually picked it out for hmm. themselves. Not like, here's a pair of shorts, throw them on. Yeah. Do what you get and don't throw a fit, like my mom says. Yeah. Not the same concept at the Christmas huh. box house. 